The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 20th, the Terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call at 877-927-664. We'd love to hear your voice. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that out to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show and welcome back. It's uh, great to be back with you right now. I got all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. Dow is down 286, S&P 31, NASDAQ 86, Russell's 15 is down 15. The semis are down 39. Tranny's off 74, 1%. A little over 1% is the big mover to the downside. That's coming from the semis, which did form a Rhodes momentum indicator top on Friday. If we take a look at Goldilocks, down 25 bucks and change. Silver's off 95 cents. Lights we crude is back a buck 45. Natural gas is off 10 cents to 30 treasury printed out at 128.04 now leave the charge dollar wise the upside you've got avis budget group up 13 bucks six percent dice therapeutics up 37 percent that's a 12 dollar move generac holdings up seven dollars six percent mb5 global five percent or five bucks united health is up six that's about one and three tenths percent move to the upside to the downside the shakers out there solar edge technology 23 bucks eight and a half percent thermo fisher scientific 13 bucks two and a half percent end phase energy Energy, 7% or 12 bucks. Adobe's down 11. Watsco is down 11 as well. And Charter Communications off 9 bucks. That's about a 3% move to the downside. So what's all that mean, Jelly Bean? Well, let's go take a look at first. I gave the new profiles. Let me make sure that you have these out here. Now, these are new profiles attempting to form. And those are inside the ES and the NQ. Here, if we take a look at the ES Mini, you'll see a one-to-one -one what price did on Friday. On Thursday, was it made it to the one-to-one -one price objective of an A to B equals CD that I've got out here? Now you've got a bearish structured profile, the center of which is at 44.18, which is where price is trading right now. If price closed below 44.18, it suggests to move to 43.62. 44.75 is the resistance level, the top of that profile. This is a new profile. I'm using my advanced Doppler tool out here. You'll see on the white background charts, we won't see these, but this is what it's attempting to form. We use that data to assist us at the moment. Right now, inside the end, Q. No topping pattern on the daily time frame, nor is there actually a confirmed topping pattern on the ES Mini for its daily time frame, but we do have a new, pro a new profile. Now, profile resistance inside the NQ, 15,370. Support 14,950. In the center, it's also a bear structure profile. 15,265 is the key number. It closed below that. Odds favor a push down to 14,950. Now, in the case of Dow and the uh, Russell 2000, we don't have any kind of a, well, I take that back. The Russell 2000 has confirmed both a sell the D point as well as a TD nine count top. It's right now consolidated with inside its profiles was supported 1852 resistance up at 1918. We can see how that is held. That was tested several times last week. In the case of the Dow, 
Dow actually took out its B point of an A to B equals CD. It did that on Thursday of last week. Friday, it closed right back below the top of that weekly profile, which is up at 34.628. And that's a little booger of resistance out here. Now, on a further move lower, where price should find support, if this is nothing more than just a uh, move uh, lower, and we are in the unfavorable seasonal cycle uh, for the equity markets out there. We could take a look at it, take a look at that during the show by looking at those seasonal time frame charts. But in the case of the Dow equity future contract, its area of support where it should find support is down at the 30. 0081 level that is the bottom of its daily profile and that is the center of its bearish structured weekly profile so it's a real key level to be watching observing as the week comes to an end of course it's just beginning and that's at 34081 level so that's what's going on we take a look at the daily equity future contracts what else should we look at while we're on this page good question let's take a look at the uh, new york stock exchange the advanced decline oscillator out here right now it is trading just below the zero threshold level that is really panel number three panel number two out here is the ex is the actual advanced decline line. Now, the advanced decline oscillator takes the advanced decline line and generates a, the oscillator is the difference between a 39 and 19 period exponential moving average out there. Now, in the case of the New York Stock Exchange, price had been moving higher in the face of a declining tops advanced decline oscillator. It's always a caution sign out there. The larger caution sign would be a close below the zero level. We can see we're minus 2.77 as an example out there that's going to continue to change. It doesn't matter what the reading is, 11, 12, it matters what it is at the end of the day. If you close below it at day's end and you close below it a second time tomorrow consecutively, then that will tell us that the sellers have regained control of the market irrespective of whether or not the spot volatility is up above the 50-day exponential moving average. When you get those two combinations in place, where you have an advanced client oscillator below its zero threshold level and a 50-day uh, uh, spot volatility where price is above the 50-day exponential moving average, that's when things would really get rocking and rolling to the downside. We don't have that as we speak just yet. With regard to that spot volatility, the 50-day price right now as we speak at uh, – 1661 and price right now trading at about 1448 out there. Uh, what else can I share with you? Well, you know what else I can share with you? Let's take a look at the uh, market breadth out here. So when we take a look at market breadth. Where did Stevie put all that? Mm hmm. Thought I had it open. Oh, I do. Okay, so here's the very short term time frame. Let's take a look at that. This is going to be for the S&P 500, which is very close to uh, so the data, the data is more accurate than the actual lines on the chart. The data shows it is very negative with 78 instruments trading above profile, 198 below profile. So 30 minute here is still pretty negative for the S&P 500. With regard to the NQ, let's get it. it's a data out here. It's statistics. We've got 15 above, 43 below. So it, too, is negative for that 30 minute time frame. For those of you that are day trading and use the 30 minute time frame out there, what you want to do is look for the next levels of support. If we go up and take a look at larger time frames. Here we've got the 60, the 240, 4-hour daily and weekly. This is for the S&P 500. We're negative in the 60 and the 240. So we know as we switch over, take a look at the uh, uh, equity future contracts and multi-time frame charts, we know that for the 30, 60, and 240 for the S&P, they're negative. We want to take a look and see if we can find any support areas. In the case of the NQ out here, it's the 60 and the 240. So for all three of, uh, for all three of those, for both of them, it's the 30, 60, and 240 that we want to dive down into and try to get a feel for what's going on inside the market. So that covers the market breadth, both using our task market profiles and the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator. So we come back from this breakout here. Let's take a look at the ES mini charts. We'll do the same for the NQ and, of course, anything else that you'd like to look at as well. Looks like Ron wants to take a look at natural gas. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Great to be back with you. We'll be back in just a few. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So I had a, a three-week excursion, so to speak, out there. It was amazing. Spent uh, time in Egypt, in Greece, in Italy. Primarily, we were in, in France uh, for a bit. Uh, but uh, this picture here, it's just, it's just kind of near and dear. This is a tiger that I uh, got together with in uh, Florence, uh, Florence, Italy, out there. This is uh, Mike. He's inside the Tiger's Den. He used to be Mike in Sarasota. Now he's traveling around the world out there. He'll be in Florence, I believe, for the next uh, six months or so. And we were able, to, my wife and I were able to catch up with him for uh, lunch. And that was a, a beautiful thing. But this is going to be even more beautiful because you got to love it. Inside the Tiger's Den, he goes by M-U-K. Uh, so now I know what uh, what the M-U-K stands for. And uh, But this is pretty cool. When he starts his day and he goes for a walk, Check out where he heads to. And Larry Pesvento would love this, that's for sure. This is an actual street, Fibonacci. So that's what, he, that's what he sees. He also sees this as well. This is to start his day out there, which is just perfect for the uh, TFNNers out here, all its tigers and tigresses. But here it is, Leonardo Fibonacci. So each day he goes for a walk. Mike sees that. So it was really great to be able to run into him out there. And, uh, you know, I'll share with you some of the other things that uh, uh, that at least that I did. A lot for me to go back and really chronicle out there. Uh, but it was just really wonderful to uh, go through history. But right now, let's go over and switch over to the markets. I know you didn't tune in really to hear me talk about the entire trip or anything like that. But there's a few things that I'll certainly sprinkle along the way. But right now, let's go switch over here, see if I can do this. I was surprised that I remembered the opening of the show. Hadn't done it for three weeks. Let's take a look at the ES Mini, the multi-time frame chart. So as I mentioned inside the ES Mini, what we don't have here, what we're missing is some kind of topping pattern for the daily time frame. Yes, we have an A to B equals CD. We took a look at that uh, earlier in the uh, show. And here, what we did was prices pulled back to its first level of support. And that first level of support is 44.10 and change out there. The actual low so far, 44.10.50. So this area is really key to be watching as it held. Why? The reason that I developed the oscillator and change line was to try to understand when a retracement was just a retracement. 
And here, so far, that's all that it is. Now, if price closes below 44.10, that number may change by a point or two. What we would then see is price moving down to the next area of support. Now, remember, this white background chart does not have the advanced Doppler tool to pick up those new profiles that are attempting to form. So again, the level, if price were to close below that 44.10 area, what it does is increase the odds for a move to 43.62. No idea whether price can bust through 43.62, but that would be the area. Now, as we further look at the ES mini charts out here, the five hour time frame chart at 2 p.m. will go ahead and form a TD nine count bottom pattern, or it certainly looks like it at this stage of the game. It's only 1121, but assuming that markets don't just rally to the upside because price would have to close below a certain level at 2 p.m., I can tell you what that level is. That level is specifically, whoops, that level specifically is, where the heck is it? It is, uh, come on, Stevie, you can find it here. There you go. It is uh, the close, which is 44, 48, 25. As long as price closes below that 2 p.m., the five-hour time frame chart will generate a TD9 count bottom pattern. Now, it's that bar following that can still make it to lower lows, and that would be a key area to be watching overnight. So simply, for those of you that are trading, those of you that are on the short side of this market, um, be aware of that and also utilize that to your advantage. For example, right now the four-hour time frame chart looks like it will negate its TD9 count bottom pattern out there, and that is suggesting for this time frame that what it wants to do is make its way back to 43.51. Now, you may remember we were taking a look at the market breadth. The market breadth is negative for the S&P, ES-mini, and the NASDAQ 100, the NQ out there for its 30, 60, and 240 minute time frame. So here, and you gotta put this together. Uh, if we see failures, failure would be a close below the daily oscillator and change line. Uh, failure would be a TD9 count bottom on the five hour time frame chart that gets taken out. The four hour looks like it's gonna get taken out, period. And that's gonna suggest that price would then move to 43.51. So how do you put this together? I'd say if you get a close below 44.10, we'd likely get back to 43.62, the bottom of its daily profile. And at 43.51 is the TD9 count breakout levels for the four and five hour time frame chart. I would say that's where price is headed to. But the confirmation of that will come or must come from a close below that daily oscillator and change line inside of the ES mini out there. As I take a look at these other charts, I really don't see anything else out here for the ES mini that is uh, worth us uh, spending much time on. So let's switch over and take a look at the NQ's charts and see what they uh, can uh, share, uh, show, show us. And here, inside the NQ, just like the ES mini, it does not have a daily topping pattern out here. At what price is doing though, price is testing its green oscillator and change line. That number is at 15,195. So use that, you, you know, a couple of points here and there. A close below that, because remember, there's a new profile attempting to form. So a close below the green oscillator and change line would then tell us that price would go target 14,950. So that becomes the first target out there. That's if we get that close below that level at day's end. Here we take a look at the five hour and the four hour time frame chart. Well, it's interesting. The NQ's signals are different than the ES mini. Never makes it easy on us, the market that is. What Stevie means by that is there's a TD9 count bottom for the four hour time frame. We looked at the ES mini and it was already trading below that level. Of course, the 2 p.m., that this current bar doesn't close till 2 p.m., and so it could recover by them. But the key level for the NQ for a four hour time frame, so I would then say two o'clock, would be down at 15,168.75. If price closes below that, what that signals to you and I is it would negate that bottoming pattern and 14,976 would become the target. So what we have out here is 14,950 and 14,976 as the likely targets for any downside move. Now the five hour time frame chart will complete or should complete a TD9 count bottom. Well, it will confirm the pattern at 2 p.m. and then it will complete the pattern as the market comes to a uh, close out there. And so you'd want to watch, watch the low of the day. Whatever the low of the day is, if that gets taken out overnight, that tells us that we're likely headed to that 14,976 level. And I do see bar number eight on a, a two hour time frame chart as well for the NQ. Remember the 16 to 30, they were bearish. As we take a look at signals there, each of those time frame charts would need a bullish reversal candle in order to confirm some type, in this case here, it'd be a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. So we don't have that. We don't have any kind of confirmed bottom for those time frames out here. 
Um, and so it's the ES that is pulled back to that uh, level of support. It's Oscillator and Change on the NQ flirting with it right now. So that covers those two markets out here. Let's go take a look at a third market that's really important for us as well. And that's the semis. And for that, we'll take a look at the SMHs out here. Why is that important? Well, if the markets are going to form some kind of top of significance, and I don't know whether they will or they won't. If they are, well, then you would see the semis participate. Well, unlike the ES Mini and unlike the NQ, the uh, SMHs, the uh, Semiconductor Index, actually generated a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top on Friday of last week. It did that when it formed that bearish reversal candle. As we speak right now, Price is trading below its oscillator and change line. That number to be watching there is the 152.97 area. If price closes below that, well, what that signals to you and I is that we should see lower price. The next price target for the SMHs at the moment would be the top of its profile. Now, that was a bearish structured profile that price had closed above. However, I'm using my advanced Doppler tool. And what I see out here for the SMH is a new profile is attempting to form. Now, in this case here, it should be more solid. It's typically more solid when I take a look at individual stocks or ETFs when they're attempting to form versus the futures. So the downside price target for the SMH is assuming to close below 152.96 will be 150.13. 150.13, that's going to be a key level to be watching for the SMH. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So I began my uh, journey, my expedition, if you will, about three weeks ago. It was on May 27th. It was on Saturday. Departed my home at about 1 in the afternoon. And uh, it was quite a journey. We went to uh, – so it was a it was tw- it was a 21-hour journey to get to uh, Cairo, Egypt. And so we leave on a Saturday afternoon. We arrive at basically what is 3 o'clock in the morning their time. Now, what I kind of expected was, uh, you know, getting through security – in Egypt, of all places, it would be pretty tough, you know, getting through customs. That was kind of a bit of a concern. It was 3 o'clock in the morning. Folks, we walked through there, and it was a bit concerning, quite frankly, because there was, like, no security. I mean, you, you got through passport control, and boom, you were on your way. So we get to the hotel about 3 in the morning. I had not slept for 29 hours solid, 30 hours solid, until we actually, you know, hit the bed. Now, uh, my wife and I, we're, we kind of uh, were on the move. And uh, so within six hours, we were out the door heading to uh, experience, um, you know, Cairo, Coptic Cairo. So because I hadn't had any sleep, we put off the uh, pyramids um, uh, until the until the uh, beginning of the pyramids till the next day. Now, the chart that I have up on my screen is the Egyptian pound. So in our first, uh, in my first uh, first uh, couple of hours of uh, being in in Egypt. Now I think I'd mentioned before I left that uh, we were staying at a Four Seasons in Cairo, and I thought the price on that was four hundred bucks a night. It turned out it was two hundred and twenty five dollars a night. And when we checked in, tired as can be, the guy said, uh, uh, "Hey, why don't we just upgrade you to a suite?" Of course, we said, "Okay." He said, "But we, you won't have a view of the pyramids." We were tired. We go to the suite. It, it was room. It was gigantic, and it, it was too cold. So I actually called the guy. It's three o'clock, and I called the guy. Said, "Can we go back to the old room? I'd really actually like to see the pyramids when I wake up in the morning." Well, you know, seeing the pyramids, you need kind of a clearish type of a day, and you got the desert out there and a bunch of sand. So that first morning, we woke up, and, you know, opened up the drapes. We really didn't see anything. But but picture this: within the first six hours of hitting the road, there, I stood at the well. I stood at the well in a cave that Jesus and Mary found refuge in for three months. That's uh, called, I think it's Abu, Abu Surga or something like, something like that. Then, then within the next half hour or so, I stood at the location where Moses was likely plucked from the Nile. And then only to be capped off by going to one of the oldest, if not the oldest mosque in uh, Egypt, and and I had and we hadn't even gotten to the pyramids yet, so it was really with just within and just very cool. Now, with regard to the Egyptian pound, um, our tour guide, for example, she wanted to be paid in dollars, so I made sure that we had you know the rest of uh, of what she needed in dollars and took care of the uh, driver as well. And what's interesting here, you can see how the Egyptian pound compared to the U.S. dollar has just been just absolutely decimated. And you actually see that out there. My experience was this. So I didn't know if I had enough Egyptian pounds. And so I thought about maybe going to a bank. I I brought brought some, but, uh, you know, as we were taking a look, I thought maybe not enough. And so I asked my guide, you know, where was a bank that we could go to? She said, look, if you want to go to the bank, they'll give you less than They'll give you less than par. They'll give you less than 30 um, Egyptian dollars for every U.S. dollar out there. So, but if we go to the black market, just down the street here, they'll give you 40. And then she said, but if you want to buy gold, you need 60. So that is just major, you know, inflation or devaluation of their currency. The only other time I experienced that was in Russia back in the 90s during the perestroika time frame. And there I was staying in a in a Russian hotel and each morning under the door would be a new pa- a, a new paper that would tell you what the new rate was unless you were paying in US dollars. So what I can tell you is that the the first portion of the journey, the king is alive and well. And that was the true all the way through Europe, whether we were in Greece, whether we were in Italy. Um, if I offered to pay in dollars, people were glad to accept that. So the idea or anybody that tells you that the US dollar is dead, it's certainly not in Europe, and it's certainly not in uh, North Africa out there. The pyramids, will, I'll talk a bit more about the pyramids. I don't want to, to take up the whole show out there. I recommend it. I mean, the coolest thing was truly going back in time. I mean, 5,000 years out there and just extraordinary. And by the way, I didn't know this before I left. I didn't. I should have done some research. I didn't really do much in the way of research out there. If I asked you, do you know how many pyramids there are? Forget about pyramids in the world. Just how many pyramids there are in uh, Egypt. 
blew my mind. It's I think it's 108 was the enough uh, is the final tally. And when we were out, this is we went to the the first pyramid, the original pyramid out there. It was the first place that we started. I know it's kind of hard for me to stop talking about, it, but we went to the very first pyramid out there. And uh, what was I going to say? Um, oh, talk about walking. Talk about walking. It's amazing. But 108 uh, pyramids are out there. And so we were at the very, we were at the oldest, the very first pyramid, which was, which was really cool. But what was really cool about this area is that, um, I think it's in Sakaar, uh, as we were coming out, they had just recently, within the past couple of months, found a new ruin. It turned out it was a burial ground, which they've, it so, I mean, it is, um, they have not even, they have not, I don't know if they've really touched the surface for everything that's underneath that big sand pile that uh, they call the uh, desert. Anyways, let's get, uh, let's get off of uh, Egypt here and let's go take a look at one of the requests that have come in. And that's from uh, Ron inside the Tiger's Den. And what Ron wanted to take a look at was natural gas. And specifically, his question was about the uh, daily time frame. And Ron's question is, what is the daily chart signaling to us? So as we pull up the daily time frame for natural gas, we'll spread this out a bit. What we can see out here is that uh, price on Friday looked like it was uh, going to be in breakout mode out there, Ron, because what price did was it closed above a TD9 count breakdown area. That was at $2.68. It closed above the top of its profile out there. The top of the profile is $2.68 as well. But you need two consecutive closes above resistance or below support in order for it to really get any traction. Otherwise, it's just a one-hit wonder out there. So now, with price back inside its profile, what is it doing? Well, it turns out that it looks like there's a small A to B equals CD out here that's being completed. And you have, at the present time, you've got a bear sash candle. So the A to B would like, like, like look like this here. We're going to go up to that uh, B point. I'm just going to move this over to the C point out there. And clearly, this has made more than a one-to-one, -one, or it appears that it has. Well, if I can grab it. That would be nice. Come on. All right. I have lost my touch, obviously, here. I've really lost the touch. Wow. What the heck? Okay, there we go. Oh, oh, my goodness. All right, let me try to copy it. Maybe that's an easier way for me to do it. There we go. So now let's move this over. And you can visually see it yourself. You don't need me to do this for you. So, yeah, maybe a 1 to 1.618A to B equals C to the upside. And now if we do get a bearish reversal candle at – can't see the NG? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I got a bit of jet lag here, and I do mean a bit of jet lag. Um, let's get to those charts. Here we go. Thank you and sorry. So now you take a look at the NG, the natural gas daily time frame. You can see the A to B equals CD pattern. So it made more than that. It was going into a TD9 count uh, top out there. So in order for a real breakout to occur, price needs to close above the May 19th high out there. That high, $2.88, 2.885 to be exact. But now we're getting a confirmed Gartley sell pattern or sell the D point. Well, at this stage here, Price with inside its profile. So the next area of support to watch the downside is going to be 258. Below that is going to be 248. And below that is going to be its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at $2.44. So, Ron, to answer your question, right now as we speak, what the daily time frame chart for natural gas is telling us is that it wants to move lower out there and maybe only move lower for a couple of days. The weekly time frame chart confirmed last week a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom out there with price right now just consolidating with inside its profile. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back. You know, we were taking a look at the uh, currency, the Egyptian pound, uh, during that uh, first break out there. And, you know, the, the first, the people of, of Egypt are, are, are so friendly. Um, you know, it's really, really a cool place. I suggest uh, folks uh, uh, visiting out there. It, it's worth it. Um, it's absolutely worth it. And uh, but the uh, it's 22 million people, I believe, you know, give up thereabouts between uh, Cairo and uh, and Giza, the the two uh, the two cities that are basically together out there, uh, just in, you know the Nile kind of separating it, and uh, and there's not a single stoplight, there's not a single stop sign or a single stoplight. It is like driving through the streets of New York, big like that, and it is amazing to watch the flow of uh, traffic out there, just just amazing. Sometimes better just sit in the back seat and keep your eyes closed out there, but uh, you don't see a whole lot of new cars. You don't see a whole lot of new anything over there quite frankly um and that's really you know that's too bad so when you get and it makes sense when you take a look at what's going on with the currency out there it kind of looks like you're driving through a bombed out um because you are right they've had nothing but wars for you know thousands of years uh, in that area which is really too bad it takes away from the beauty of everything in any event let's move over to one of our requests out here this one from um jambalaya inside the tigers and let's take a look at fez now fez is a uh, etf it is the uh, euro stocks 50 etf out there so in order to trade this etf you really need to know what's going on internally with inside let's say the last the top 10 holdings so i don't have that i do have the top two holdings that represent about 15 percent of fez now what we can see here today is it just gapped big to the downside so it's going to negate there will not be tomorrow if we were to take a look at these charts, there will not be a daily TD9 count pattern out here. Is there anything to suggest that would have given us a clue as to, uh, you know, that, uh, that, that that this thing would have gapped to the downside like this? And, and the answer is no. I don't see the pattern, at least on the daily time frame. But it has. If the question was, where is this likely headed to, I'd have to go with the 4467 to 4506 area. That are pro, Those are profile levels on the daily time frame. But as I mentioned, it's an ETF, and you need to know at least what the – 50%, uh, at least what the holdings that represent 50% of the ETF are doing. Well, two of them, the top two, 
Uh, this was as of, I believe as of Friday. The top two would be Azimil Holdings. ASML is a ticker symbol out here. Now, in the case of Azimil Holdings, it would have given you a signal or at least a preparation signal. Now, I believe this is like 8 or 9% of the ETF. And on Friday, this generated a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top. So what Azimil Holdings should do is test support. Since price is already below the green oscillator and change line, price should target 70709. If price closes below that, well, then... We're looking at 70608 or thereabouts. It's weekly oscillator and change line. And below that, then 676 uh, comes into play. So watch 70709, uh, 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 jump a lie, if you are inside of FEZ out there. But then the second holding, you also want to take a look. And again, these two holdings represent 15% of that ETF. And here, what we can see is a TD9 count top. Now, this is ticker symbols MC. It's actually the retailer LVMH out there, Louis Vuitton. But I think they, uh, I think they own um, uh, others as well. So Louis Vuitton. So you had two topping patterns that were present. If you were trading this, if you only looked at the ETF, you wouldn't have gotten the clarity. And, and I, the third instrument out here, I believe, is um, TTE. The fourth uh, instrument is SAP. Siemens is the next. So it's really a. Uh, it's really a hodgepodge of instruments, but you need to know what that hodgepodge is doing. With regard to LVMH, this is very likely headed back to support. And support would be the oscillator and change line and bottom of its profile. And that's in the 4348 to 4375 level. So jambalaya, that's what I see when I take a look at FEZ. But we take when we when we're trying to understand what FEZ is doing, we've really got to go take a look at the instruments that make that up. So I'd suggest going to take a look at TTE, SAP, SIE, and SAN. And that's probably going to give you 15, uh, 24, about 30, 30 some odd percent of the ETF uh, uh, of the ETF out there. So hope that that helps you out. Thanks much for writing in. DKC inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at Costco. CUST is the ticker symbol out here. It's trading right now. So let's take a look at what did this generate? Well, I do see a wave number seven top out there. That's the letter G. Where'd that come from? Where did that come from? I was looking at my numbering system out there. So I, I, I can't be completely sure. But here when we take a look at what is it doing right now, what it's doing right now is it's trading below that momentum line, that oscillator and change line out there, which is priced at 521 and change. So price with inside a profile. I would say if price closes below, that profile ranges from 514.71, that's your ultimate area of support, to 513.26, that's your area of resistance out there. So odds favor that price is going to head back to the 514 area, when I take a look at the weekly time frame chart, nothing bearish about it at the moment, nor is there anything bearish on the monthly chart. The monthly chart is consolidated with inside of profile. The weekly chart is um, is trading above profile, above a green oscillator and change line. Last week, it was dealing with a swing point. The swing point from February 3rd, that did 9.9 million shares. Last week, this did 9.5 million shares. Really not too bad as it was pushing higher. And it's pushing into a swing point that has 17 million shares. So those folks, if we open up this chart out here, at some point in time, those folks inside of Costco, there was a TD9 count top. Now that we open it up out here, there was a TD9 count top. Uh, back in April, April the 8th, this is the weekly time frame of 2022 out there. You had another TD9 count top that formed out here August 19th. We don't have any kind of top like that at the moment. It's really been more of a sideways consolidation out there. But those are going to be your key resistance areas. So no top on the weekly. Let the daily do its thing and pull back um, out there. If it, again, if it closes below 514.71, that's going to signal a further move lower. So DKC. I hope that that helps you out. You say you were in, in Egypt yourself in 1988. Um, lived on Sphinx Street. Cool. Uh, oh, cool. Grandfather discovered the Solar Boat Museum next to the Great Pyramid. I didn't see that out there. But, uh, I, I, and folks, if you do go, make sure you've got your climbing shoes on. And I do mean steps. You Between there... Now, we thought we walked a lot. No, I, I had worked out pretty hard. I lost about 30, let me get this right, 37 pounds uh, from the time period that I uh, went on a uh, on a diet, not that far, uh, right, right after uh, David's uh, passing out there, and was able to get down to a weight I hadn't seen for like three decades out there. Tried to keep it. The first, it was pretty easy to do it in Egypt because we were, we were just simply on the run. 
out there. And then the next portion of the trip took us to Santorini in Greece. I'd never been to Santorini. That is an amazing place, too. But nobody told me about all the walking that we had to do. So our room, just to get up to not the main road, just to get up to a road where we could at least start walking reasonably up and down, were 108 steps. And this is it's it's historic. Those steps were formed a long time ago. And each step was probably about a foot, a little bit less than a foot. But that was the climb just to get out of my uh, of my uh, room and then to start start doing uh, start to start continuing the exp- exploration out there, the expedition. In any event, that's Costco. Let me see here. I don't see any request. Uh, inside of my uh, email system. I don't see anything else inside of the uh, Tiger's Den. If I've overlooked anything, please let me know. But let's go take a look at something that is worth taking a look at. Well, we'll have to do that when we get back from this break, and that'll be gold. We'll take a look at gold out there. Why does Steve you want to take a look at Goldilocks? Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. You know, one of the cool things just taking in the environment and everything was the prayer time. Uh, you know, the Muslims, uh, by, I think it's four or five different times during the day, once it's before dawn, then it's then it's in the early afternoon and late afternoon and evening, uh, maybe sunset as well. I think it's five times during the day. And the coolest thing is when you're out there, you know, and you're walking around, you know, these objects that were built so long ago. And, and it just kind of puts you, it just makes you grateful to be present um, you know, to be present in somebody else's culture and, and take that in. In any event out here, this is gold. What's the reason that Stevie's looking at gold? All right. This is the monthly chart out there, and this is showing us consecutive weeks higher and consecutive weeks lower out there. If we are just simply, if we are simply now at the beginning of a bull market, and we very well, very well may be, what we should see is a bottom this month. If you take a look at, come all the way back here, we're in the 1999 time period out here. If you take a look at it on a monthly basis, you'll see a number, what looks like 12, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Those are two consecutive months lower, and then price moves higher. That is the so-called Texas two-step. Well, turns out that we now are in month number two. Now, I don't know if this is the beginning of a new bull market or not in gold, but we want to be paying attention to it because if it is, then odds favor that there's a bottom that forms this month out here. Now, I don't have a bottom signal on a daily time frame just yet or on a weekly. Again, these are just the consecutive months out there, but we most certainly want to be paying attention to uh, gold. We did have a request before the show ended. This came from Duncan Steve. Wanted to take a look at AMD. As we take a look at AMD out here, it is trading below profile. Now, this formed a Rosemont indicator top. It did it uh, two, four trading sessions ago. Now, this could be the second close below the bottom of that profile, Stevie, at 121.30. That then opens up the door for a move lower. Now, the two targets will be 109 and change. That's the weekly oscillator and change line, with the second target being 103.49. That's your daily TD9 count breakout area. You can see on the monthly, price ran right in resistance at that TD9 count breakdown resistance level. Folks, great to be here with you. All those folks that had filled in for me while I was gone, thank you so much for uh, doing that. And uh, I'll look forward to being with you tomorrow. Folks, I was prepared. I was ready to do a show yesterday. Then realized that it was a holiday. That's how gone we were from what I'll call civilization. Have a great day, folks. We'll see you tomorrow.